Okay, for the second half of the video, we're going to show off the actual city itself. So in the city, we have um, a few NPC crowd spheres that are, that are actually used to populate the city. They will walk around, random at wander to different locations. They are also using the modular character, as I showed before in the previous video, to actually generate different and unique characters based on your actual um, template design for how many ever clothing, character meshes, shoes, hair items that you want to be able to, that you would want to blend and mix together. Um, they will also find point of interest and sit at these point of interest depending on how you configure your point of interest. So if you make a bar table with the point of interest, it will go to the bar table and ask the bar table what it should do. That point of interest object node should be able to tell your NPC that, hey, you need to play this animation to sit on, to, on, sit on the bar stool starting at this location. And then it should say, hey, while you're on the bar stool, do one of these animations for a while and then play the exit animation to get out of the bar stool to go and do something else. Um, the area that I'm in currently right now is showing off the other buildings that can that can be created with the modular um, the modular building the the modular building generator. Um, when you actually generate a building, there's also smart objects. Right now, the doors are smart objects. So instead of having static meshes, you can actually switch these static meshes out with a smart object that will give you the ability to either customize and lock certain doors or be able to unlock certain doors with the key, however you want to modify the blueprint. Right now, these blueprint only allow, I mean, they only detect when I'm close, open the door, wait until I'm actually out of the door and we'll close the door behind after you've actually exited the um, the door volume. Um, this is just a general place to play around for anyone who's using the example kit to be able to I don't know, throw whatever they want in this environment. Um, this environment is just a stress test of the system to make sure that Everything will still operate when you completely flood a map with almost too much data. Um, even this part of the the persistent level is pretty thick and heavy, and I made it that way on purpose just to make sure that under the stress and low things run at a pretty optimal frame rate. Especially with all of these um, generated buildings in this map, it's actually running. I actually get anywhere between. Um, 45 to 50 frames per second and my graphic card is about a GTX a GTX 970 or a 980 I can't remember which one so out here we have our, imp our not NPCs I keep saying NPCs we have our monsters and the monsters are generated from spawn spears and the spawn spears will spawn enemies based on the actual distance you are from the actual spawn spear and it will just like the crowd spawner it would help Ooh. Um, just like the, the crowd spawner it will try to go in and remove the actual crowd members so that way you don't have too many actual AI characters populating and um, making your area completely dense. Um, as I explained before, that was actually the death animation that handles the cleaning up of the actual character. Um, as for the actual combat system, the it's set up for the Anyone that you're not controlling will automatically be a AI player. The AI player will actually <coughs> battle depending on your battle type, your battle settings for the actual player. So I don't know if they've actually used it yet, but 
there's a skill called a ground uh, ground wave that the that I have created in the database and I've set it for the AI to use it every five turns and the main player that's actually fighting can actually use this as a in combo trigger so if I go to the end of my combo and charge the last hit I can do an actual ground stomp wave that will do additional damage with that actual move configure, configured at whatever the damage power is set for the actual move. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, all the monsters are set up in the database as well as all the characters and actors for the actual fighting list. So if you wanted to tweak anything, you can tweak that. You can load the level, um, you can load the game over again and test out your new settings. Um, my idea when creating this to actually set up a battle arena test map. So that way you can test all of your monsters your characters and things like that in one single testing environment instead of actually throwing them out in a instead of throwing them out in the actual map and going through an actual story you can just test your maps in a battle area um, and load a new game and go instantly to your battle area to be able to test your different stats and tweaks outside of the actual database manager in the database manager, you can actually go in and tweak whatever you want and do actual battle simulations in the actual editor, in the actual database manager. I also already have a video up that shows, um, it goes through an example of the actual process of creating this these characters here the, and leveling the actual battle information for these characters. Oh. <coughs> but um, outside of, I'm trying to get to level two real quick so I can actually show the process of using a spell. <coughs> Right now, I'm actually in the item menu, which lets me go through and select my different characters. It slows down time so you can see everything that's going on. I selected the wrong person. There we go. So it slows down time, so it just gives you the ability to give some kind of feedback while you're choosing items. Um, you can actually change the, the time dilation to whatever you want. If you want an actual active battle to be going on while you're selecting the items and things like that, you can just dial the dilation down to uh, back up to one and it gives a more difficulty of a decision when trying to quickly select items and things like that. Um, right now, I think I have the dilation turned down to about a point one, so it's as slow as possible. I need monsters to fight. I'm almost level two, so I can show off the spell. further in to find something these are level three I'm actually no they're level two I should be able to kill them this one should give me a line level and then after I get my spell it's pretty much overpowered so I shouldn't have any issues with anything after this so I'm actually going to I'm gonna go up here to where there are more monsters and I'm gonna show off the spell I can move the AOE around with the actual L3 and select 
and it will spawn the spell at the middle of the actual AoE area and give damage to any enemy that is inside of it. Now likewise, the enemy has the ability, the boss in this level actually has the ability to spawn the spell as well to be able to destroy an enemy. Well, destroy the actual player as an actual special ability. <coughs> And I am not going to be able to kill this, so I'm going to cheat. Make sure I go to the right section. So I'm going to show the boss off real quick. I'm pretty much going to die from this. And back in the back, we have a boss that's level 5. And there is pretty much no way, even with the spell, I don't think that's even strong enough. I don't even have enough skill points. Well, I don't even have enough MP to cast a spell. So let's see what goes on here. I'm going to try this out. It's doing very little damage because I am definitely under level for this fight. It's already killed off one of the other enemies. I mean, one of my other party members. My hope is to actually get her down far enough to trigger her own version of the... And there's her version of the actual skill, which probably will kill me as soon as I get one hit off. If maybe I can actually dodge enough of these, I probably can actually heal myself. And survive this at level two, maybe. Ah. Oh, that's bad. This spell is actually put together with different pieces of a different pieces of the puzzle to generate a spell. It will the first thing it does is it will suck you in and then try to keep you into the actual middle of it while at the same time just taking a general um, a general projectile and cascading that down to different random parts, points within that area at a different configurable AOE. That's why the AOE in mine is actually configured bigger than the one in the actual boss to be able to give the player a little bit of ability to stay alive during the actual spell. This is actually, this actually covers the majority of everything that I have to show off in the actual demo. Everything else is in the documents and in the example, um, in the example videos, and it should cover everything that's inside of the actual system itself. If there's any other questions, you can leave me a, a message on my YouTube page or either on my um, Facebook page, and I can answer anything that you have any questions about. Thank you and have a nice day.